This episode is brought to you by Rebel Massage Deep Tissue Body Butter. Crafted because oil is too slick and lotion absorbs too fast, these organic, professional-grade bodywork butters give you the grip you've been looking for. The best techniques in the world can get lost without the right product to support them. Try the Get a Grip version for more specific, focused work, or the Total Meltdown version for that grip with a little extra glide. Made by a massage therapist for massage therapists. Head over to rebelmassage.com to get your grip today. Anatomy Trains is thrilled to announce our first ever Women's Health Symposium. This live online event takes place February 26 and 27, 2022, AWST, that's Australian Western Standard Time. Register by January 21st to receive a significant early bird discount and over $400 worth of bonuses. We have invited a powerful lineup of all female authors, physicians, therapists, and clinicians to share their passion and life's work. Visit anatomytrains.com for details. Hi, my name is Allison Denny, and this is the Rebel MT Podcast, where you'll hear me forcibly colliding the worlds of anatomical jargon and humor. I believe that when you know your anatomy, the what, and you know your physiology, the how, the techniques will follow but the loads of Latin and the gobs of Greek can make a cranium convulse. It is a little overwhelming to dip your toe into the sea of anatomical knowledge, only to find that it is a bottomless ocean. You are smart, but this is intimidating. You will get there eventually. In the meantime, let's look at things differently so that you will actually want to take a swim, or at least hop on a boat and take a peek at what's under the surface. Art Riggs has been known to be the teacher of teachers. A certified advanced rolfer, he has been teaching to the global stage since 1988. His experience with Olympic athletes and his published works in magazines, books, and videos offer incredible insights into the work we do. Above all, though, Art Riggs is humble. You know, I don't think we should be on Mount Olympus looking down at all the people we are helping. And that we're here because of the, the teachers that are teaching 10 students in a massage school that, you know, is struggling to survive and sending those 10 people out, some of them becoming teachers. And, you know, they're the base of this pyramid. Art's passion for the work and his love of people became abundantly clear to me when I had the opportunity to sit down and talk with him. You know, it really is strange. I feel incredibly lucky uh, to be in uh, the massage and bodywork uh, world. I still am practicing uh, probably about a quarter of, you know, full practice. And I can't imagine stopping. Growing up without an introduction to the massage and bodywork world, Art entered the field a little bit late in the game. I grew up in the Midwest where nobody got a massage. Uh, I really knew nothing about it. And I had my first massage when I was about 38 and um, decided, wow, that was, was pretty cool. And then um, sort of a long story. I did a lot of athletics and a lot of heavy work. I've had tons of surgeries, uh, shoulder and knee replacements, hip um, and uh, it really was catching up to me when I was reaching 40, and I got rolfed. And I was astonished because I'd been to physical therapy um, quite a while for several of my uh, knee surgeries. And although it was helpful, it really didn't do the trick. And I ended up getting rolfing and was just simply astonished. It was a time in my life where uh, I was looking at a uh, – a change, sort of growing up from uh, where I'd been coasting. I had a, a bachelor's in psych and a master's in English, and I'd, I'd done PhD work in uh, exercise physiology, but had never settled down. And it was pretty scary, which I think a lot of people getting into massage is scary. Am I going to be able to make money in this? Am I going to like the work? Am I going to like myself? 
So long story, I um, I got a massage certification, which was required to get into the Rolf Institute, and I became a, a rolfer. And um, I still really love it. I never thought uh, that I would really be getting into teaching. And then that's sort of another story how that happened. But um, I think like a lot of people I know, I didn't really plan it. I just stumbled into it. And I feel very lucky. Art's ability to look back and feel lucky about his involvement in the massage and bodywork community is something that he didn't quite feel when he first got into it at age 40. So I spent a lot of time in school and thought that I was going to suddenly do something that was going to be my life's work. And then that kept putting it off. So I did various things. I worked hard manual labor. I waited tables uh, and, you know, got my enjoyment out of life uh, outside of work. I I love reading and, you know, outdoors and and, and exercise. So um, I was at a a point in my life, my body was giving up on me and I felt, as you mentioned at 40, I felt like I was over the hill. You know, that uh, uh, particularly when I got into the Rolf training, most of the kids uh, there were 25 years old. Uh, most of the students, when I started teaching, are 20 years old. And I felt like I'd wasted a lot of my life. But I think I, I probably a little bit inadvertently picked up a little bit of wisdom along the way. And um you know, who knows what I'd be feeling if I'd been started rolfing when I was 25, but I still feel fresh. I'm still learning. And um, it was scary starting. It was a totally different world. There was no internet. So I started rolfing about three, four years ago. And uh, most rolfers would get, put notices up on telephone poles until they got established. And they'd be giving open houses and giving demonstrations, which is how I met my uh, rolfer. Um, I'm not a very good businessman. I was a slow starter. And I think partly because of that, I'm not very self-promoting. I got a job working at the physical therapy group that had done a few of my surgeries. And I think that was a huge difference for me as I, I started working with injuries and I really learned the sort of Western medicine uh, scientific uh, therapeutic view, which has many, many good points, but I think um, just as many limitations. And um, so I worked in PT for 10 years, starting out three days a week as a PT aide. And then as my practice grew, um, I still kept one morning a week with them just because I really love the people there and it's fun getting out. And I was was uh, still learning. So I kept that up until I finally just uh, decided it's, it's, you know, it's, it's cost me money and time. And so I moved on from there, but that I think if I had not worked for um, that PT group, I'd be a different person. I probably wouldn't have written my book. Um, So again, another one of those lucky breaks that I wasn't uh, starting off at a sprint from the uh, starting line and and needed to have some work. With a strong background in physical therapy, exercise science, and structural integration, Art believes that the work we do as massage therapists as a whole has a lot more to do with the nuanced aspects of our sessions. And I have to be honest, I was not graced with a great touch. And, um, you know, sort of, uh, I got involved. It was pretty intense. And I'm a hard worker. I've done physical work my whole life in spite of all the academics. And I uh, played a lot of sports. And so I sort of had the uh, tell of the hun philosophy of body work. You know, cram it in there and make things happen. And... <laughs> So I really, really, sincerely uh, did not have a great touch. But our PT group, which was very well known, we worked with the Golden State Warriors, which did help me. I got involved with working with athletes and we worked on the Oakland A's baseball team. They were the classic PT mill. Heat when you first come in, um, ultrasound, work the Cybex machine, attach some electrical things, blah, blah, blah. And They did not do hands-on work. And it's what this other teacher was saying. They they weren't trained in it. And it got almost embarrassing that they'd say, can you put your hands on, you know, just give this person five minutes, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the person said, I want to go back to that guy. And 
I was not doing anything magical, but I was getting my hands on them. And pretty soon, they, after three months, they gave me a 40% raise. Uh, and then three months after that, they gave me another big raise and gave me a room and just said, go in and do your stuff, whatever the hell it is. And, you know, it was great fun. And I just think that any therapist out there, if they really want to get good and you study this and you take workshops, you can be doing that to your clients, whether you work in a spa and you're doing relaxation massage or what. You communicate with the, the client. And you ask what they want, and you don't get into some set routine and rush them out the door, and the next person's on the table in five minutes. So Art learned the importance of communication and the quality of touch in a session. But he's extremely well-versed in anatomy, and I think the question we all have is, how did he come to understand the human body so well? Okay, okay. Um, I think you're psychic because that's one of my huge points is, is learning the anatomy. And I'm always telling my students, um, read the books, see the videos. There's some great ones, you know, uh, out there. One video that I, I, I just love um, is Auckland's Video Atlas of Human Anatomy. It's several volumes and you don't have to get Every single one. You don't need to get the organs unless you're interested in that. You don't need to get the brain function. And I have probably watched that over and over again, um, the whole thing, six, seven times. I used to get on my uh, elliptical trainer and I just had my TV down there and I plugged the DVD in there. Now it's all undownloadable. Uh, it just takes a while for anatomy to sink in. But what I see is that people are afraid of anatomy and they judge themselves and they feel inadequate. So they shove that aside. They still can have great hands, great touch, but it's just an area where they, they feel inadequate and you have to keep learning in that. And you have to keep relearning the things you've forgotten. And as far as watching videos, I, <laughs> I, I sort of learned way back then that if, if I had a new date that said, let's go to your place and watch a video, that probably they didn't want to watch um, a dissection uh, you know, <laughs> and maybe had other things in mind. But, um, you know, I, I just can't emphasize it uh, uh, enough. Um, I, I don't think I'm a geek on that. Uh, and I think it's not just to know anatomy. You, It gives you a sense of how to move the body, what to accomplish. And what I see, and I've, I've worked with people on anatomy that, that I know it's holding them back. And they have this huge picture of 206 bones and who knows how many muscles that move those bones. They don't have any sense of kinesiology, which is what anatomy is really about. How does the body move? How does, um, if you have tennis elbow, which muscles are involved with being tight there. So tennis, uh, you know, elbow is on the outside of the el uh, elbow. And so um, you basically have a, a really tight supinator muscle. So you need to understand where that muscle goes. You need to go all the way to the attachment on the radius, et cetera, et cetera. For golfer's elbow, then you're, you're going to have pronator teres and pronator quadratus. And you get things done when you understand that. So uh, it isn't just being able to say the names. And so what I've had people tell me that really worked for them when they were intimidated by anatomy, um, I don't think there's more than 50 really important muscles for a massage therapist to know. But you take all these tests and they ask these little secret muscles to see how much you've learned. And if you're not confident, find out what muscles you're not confident in. Make a list and say two of those muscles a week. In 25 weeks, you could get every single muscle that you need to know really down pat. You say, I'm going to work on the teres muscles this week. And every client, you get into the teres. You feel the difference between clients, uh, what they feel like. You, you learn to abduct or add duck the arm to stretch or release those. Uh, and a perfect example there of knowing your anatomy. So if somebody is limited in external 
rotation of the shoulder, then you need to know the internal rotators that you can release. So Paris Major is an internal rotator. Let's release that. Um, Latissimus comes around to the front of the humerus. It is an internal rotator. Um, Peck Major. But if they're having trouble with internal rotation, then you get back into the rotator cuff and the external rotator. So virtually every muscle in the body has an antagonist and has an action and another uh, action by the antagonist to counteract that. And you get balanced between those. So it isn't just learning a bunch of names and, and whatever. It's what do they do? So, um, you know, just a huge thing. And once you start getting into that, then your whole practice will just explode. For a lot of massage therapists, though, confidence in our anatomical knowledge and our physiological jargon can feel like a distant dream. I was curious to hear how Art took all of this knowledge he was using to grow and create a successful practice and stand in front of a classroom and teach that knowledge to students. I am still learning, and I still uh, bemoan how little I know. And so I, I do think that some people think that you just learn something and then it's there. And um, one thing about learning in massage is that I, I still see when I was teaching, you know, newly out of school people that they've they've taken a 200 hour course or a 400 hour class course. And many of the teachers are very dogmatic. This is the way you do things. And they want to come and keep on more knowledge on top of that knowledge. And knowledge, not just in massage, but in life, often means letting go of some of your earlier knowledge. And so I have to butt heads with people that I'm trying to teach them to stretch tissue and they're slathering on lotion off on the body that, you know, it's slipping off the table. And, um, but that's the way they've been told and always move from distal to proximal so that you're not decompressing joints or you're compressing them, um, all of that. So um, I am... I'm confident enough, but I, I think that you can't all of a sudden reach some plateau where you feel, oh, now I can do this. And I, again, stumbled on the teaching. Uh, I, I do have a, a credential to teach English for my uh, you know, literature background. And my father was a professor. Uh, and so and I had great teachers at school. I had fantastic teachers in body work at the Rolf Institute and, and elsewhere. Um, so basically, since I wasn't getting rich immediately when I became a Rolfer and quit my other jobs, um, the school where I took my initial training, the McKinnon Institute in Oakland, great school, great school. I just feel so lucky to have gone there. Um, the owner knew I was a rolfer when I got out. And they decided they were going to be the cutting edge of massage schools and offer deep tissue training. Because deep tissue was hardly ever spoken of. Uh, it really, it just wasn't taught. And so we started with me teaching one eight-hour class. And you're a deep tissue therapist. Teaching one eight-hour class at one school led to another two-day class at another school, which led to more classes at more schools. And all of a sudden, Art found himself teaching. I never planned to become a teacher. This was, I didn't have much money. And then I, I got that offer. See, this is pretty darn fun. <laughs> and, um, I would look at some of my really great teachers and I look at, some of my early teaching and um, just like becoming a therapist or a body worker, you're not going to be fabulous at the start. And I wasn't fabulous at the start. So anybody that wants, and you sort of alluded this to become a teacher, throw your hat in the ring. You know, um, I do think that I was pretty lucky with my, my what, what brought me into sort of teaching internationally and, and things like that was that I, I did do a book that um, came basically from my 
my teaching in those other classes, I was seeing students sitting there scribbling and writing everything down and drawing stick figures when I put people in. And I said, they're not learning this. They're sitting and writing this down. So I developed, you know, handouts, which then long story, uh, somebody said, you should try to get this published. I got it. And then that really got me going. And then what happened from there was people would say, why don't you do a video? And I stumbled along there and did this was going to do a two hour video. By the time I got done, it was 11 hours. And um, so I did that. And that's how I got into sort of making a little bit of a name for myself. Art Riggs may have stumbled into making a name for himself, but he was eventually inducted into the Massage Therapy Hall of Fame, where he found himself elbow to elbow with many other great leaders and teachers in the field. His recollection of that moment, though, holds a lot more humility than one might expect from somebody so accomplished. I hadn't thought about this for ages, but years ago, um, speaking of notoriety, um, there were some, I forget what it's even called, the uh, Massage Therapist Hall of Fame or something. And so I, I got in, I didn't even know even know about it. They said, oh, you're, we're going to present you with this, and you can come, and blah, blah, blah. And... Um, there were a lot of really good teachers there that I really respect and, and things. And I didn't have anything planned. I didn't know I was supposed to stand up there and pick this thing up and say something. And basically, um, I just said, you know, I, I really respect all these people here. But, you know, I don't think we should be on Mount Olympus looking down at all the people we are helping. And that we're here because of the the teachers that are teaching 10 students in a massage school that, you know, is struggling to survive and sending those 10 people out, some of them becoming teachers. And, you know, they're the base of this pyramid and we're reaping the benefits of that. And we're not on Mount Olympus, you know, bestowing our, our great knowledge to people. So I would say to anybody, you know, if you can teach, maybe just start working on tutoring with a few students or something. Do it. It's it's great fun. And you'll learn. Teaching has taught me more about body work than any books or anything I've had. Because you have to articulate your knowledge to get it to people. Throwing his hat into both the teaching ring and the practitioner ring, Art found a life that he began to settle into. He clearly found success with both paths, but success means something different for everybody. I wanted to hear how Art Riggs, this humble man who stumbled into so many great things, defined success. Success, not just in body work, but of course in life, isn't how much money you make or how many students you see. And if you feel good about your work, if you're confident in your work, the success uh, will come. And um, I, I just, I, I, the biggest thing I notice in, in, in my uh, students that I've taught, be it physical therapists or whatever, is they are hard on themselves. And if you're hard on yourself, you're not going to get that feeling of, ah, this is, you know, I'm really doing something here. And your, your clients aren't going to pick that up. If you don't feel at ease working on some place, do your research. Find out where the jugular vein is, where the carotid artery is, where the popliteal uh, artery is, um, where the, oh gosh, many, you know, the form, femoral artery is if you're, or the, or the um, organs are if you're working on the psoas muscle. Um, find out where they are. If you aren't feeling comfortable working there, of course, look at some videos, but go to somebody that is good at that and feel it. And that's what I would say, no matter what, beginning massage service, you're hurting for money. You paid a bunch of money. Save your pennies. Go to a really good massage therapist. See what it feels like. See how they work their session. So that money comes back to you. And the money comes back from not just watching YouTube and all that. Take a workshop. Get in there with other people. Pick their brains. Get the teacher's hands on you. And it always comes back to you. Art's presence in the world of bodywork and massage has certainly come back to him. To be able to switch gears later in life 
enter a new career and find fulfillment and success may seem impossible, but Art Riggs has done exactly that. His dedication to the human body and how it works, coupled with his ability to stumble into a path that suited him best, has been a gift to all of us. Members are loving ABMP 5-Minute Muscles and ABMP Pocket Pathology, two quick reference web apps included with ABMP membership. ABMP 5-Minute Muscles delivers muscle-specific palpation and technique videos plus origins, insertions, and actions for the 83 muscles most commonly addressed by body workers. ABMP Pocket Pathology, created in conjunction with Ruth Werner, puts key information for nearly 200 common pathologies at your fingertips and provides the knowledge you need to help you make informed treatment decisions. Start learning today. ABMP members log in at abmp.com and look for the links in the featured benefits section of your member homepage. Not a member? Learn about these exciting member benefits at abmp.com more.